Welcome back, everyone. You are watching or listening to the Truth That Heals podcast. I am your host, Ryan Anthony Hernandez, and I'm here again with Diane Halfman. Diane, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thanks, Ryan, for having me. Always good to be here with you. So in at the end of our last episode, we spoke about uh, Diane's final experiences as a police officer. And I would like to ask you, how was it that you were able to transition from being a police officer uh, into becoming a consultant, a trainer, and eventually a podcaster? Hmm. Well, like almost all of life's experiences, I, I didn't know that that was really the direction I was going to go in when I retired from uh, the department. I really gave myself some time off to really kind of explore and see what I wanted to do. And, you know, because I was exhausted from from the work and a lot of things that were happening, uh, I just had decided that I actually didn't share with a lot of people that I was actually in law enforcement. I thought I was going to be doing something completely different. Uh, I didn't necessarily see how my law enforcement background was going to serve me in the future uh, in what I was going to be doing. But what I found is that when uh, people would find out that I was a police officer, they were intrigued. They wanted to hear the stories, especially about the undercover work and what that experience was. And as I started talking to people about that, you know, a correlation was made between the type of skills, especially when I worked undercover prostitution, of what those skills were. And a lot of them were being able to trust your intuition, to make quick decisions, to not second guess myself, uh, to really be able to look at the big picture. And, you know, when I looked at how that transferred into civilian life, uh, it really became apparent that it was a really good audience for me to speak to about how to cultivate these skills that people could use in their everyday life. And so when I started consulting, I started consulting with entrepreneurs and corporate leaders that were able to maybe make the big decisions, but then they would maybe second guess themselves and they weren't necessarily trusting their intuition or they weren't sharing where the vision of their company and where they wanted to go. And so I started having people ask me to consult with them about how to cultivate those skills and how to bring it into their life. So I started doing that and also some training as well about uh, communication, about how they could communicate better within their teams. Because one of the number one things that breaks down in um, any relationship, but particularly in a company, is uh, the lack of clear communication where somebody heard something differently maybe someone interpreted something differently you know there's a lot of different things that can be lost in translation if we don't have the skill set of how to have the systems and the ways to be able to uh, build a culture that that people really want to have and so and out of that uh, i had started uh, the podcast that also gave people uh, some insights and skills uh, some life skills to be able to make better, better choices in their life. And what is the name of this podcast? So my podcast is live your spa life and spa life. The name of my company, the SPA and spa life is for seek power always. So it's that power within you, whether you call that your intuition, that's your God self. It's all of those things within you to, you know, lead the life that you want to live and to be guided in, in that way. Uh, you know, a lot of times people think of power in, in a negative way. Maybe they think of politics or they think of a, you know, a corporate tyrant uh, and, or power as being something that happens to you or something that is outside of you. The power that I'm speaking about is the power that we actually were God created that's within us. Like we are powerful beings, like we're here for a purpose and we want to be able to listen to that inspiration, that power, that direction that we have within ourselves. And I absolutely believe that everything that we have encountered in our life good, positive, or neutral are things meant to support us that gives us the insight to actually have the skill set to do the work that we're here to do. In our last episode, you were, you were sharing how at the end of your career as a police officer that you had, uh, how would you call it, this uh, fatigue um, from, you know, going, you know, full on, you know, uh, police chases, and then you're there, you know, making boring reports, and then again, you know, uh, full adrenaline. And then 
my question is when you finished that job and before you started doing this work uh, with the SPA, um, was there a moment where you didn't know that you would be doing this? And was it ever difficult discerning what to do next in life? How did you get drawn to this and know that this is what I'm going to do? Hmm. Right. You know, I don't think we all, we always know a hundred percent, right? And that's where that is trusting yourself and moving in the direction. And that's why I'd mentioned in the other episode, one of my favorite quotes by Clement Watt is take the first step, no more, no less. And the next step will be revealed. So I just kept taking the next step, right. And seeing what was present. And I took, I took the step of, you know, first of all, when I had spa life, you know, I really started with that concept came to me. Right. And I didn't know what that was going to mean in my life. I didn't know what was going to be created out of that. I just know that that word came to me in a moment of silence, which is why I think it's important to have prayer in your life or meditation or just silent time where you can listen to the inner knowings that we we receive these messages and when we stop and listen to them. So spa life is one of those messages that came to me. And then I just started being curious and started asking more questions and started stepping in the direction. And then people started hiring me to consult and do some training. And so it kept kind of evolving as we go. So, you know, when we have something that comes to us, we have the opportunity to either dismiss it or step into it and see what's possible. And as you started evolving and taking one step at a time, did you see yourself growing in wisdom? Yeah, absolutely. I think that I think every everything that happens in our life, if we take a moment and we sit with it and we look at all angles of that, not just our own perspective, but the perspective of somebody else, the perspective of people around us, we can then get a, a better idea of what was the message in there for us. And I think anytime we stop and look at, you know, different aspects of our life and we look at what was in that for us, then we can build our wisdom and actually be able to look at things from a different perspective. So for instance, I've uh, a friend of mine who's, uh, who was divorced and her daughter was talking with some of her friends and she was feeling bad that she was a divorced kid. And, you know, her mom said, I want you to think about what could you, you know, what does that experience add to your life? Like, what is it do you think that, you know, if you look at it from the perspective that everything happens in your life for a reason, what could that be? And she thought about it throughout the day, you know, was like, I, I'm not sure what that is. And so in that conversation with her mother, you know, her mother was saying that, what if one of your friends as an adult went through an experience like that and was sharing it with you and was asking for some support in that. But if you had no idea what that felt like, if you had no idea what that experience was, you wouldn't necessarily be able to give some insight and have the empathy to be able to listen to that person, to be able to support them in that way. And so if we look at everything that happens to us in our life as gaining the tools to allow ourselves to serve in a different way, to give our perspective, to then have better understanding of something, we can then look at all of our experiences in some ways serves us at a deeper level as part of our path. I really like that uh, because in my own journey, um, you know, I did go through a sort of cult, uh, you know, religious and spiritual abuse. And while it was happening, I'm always wondering, why is this happening to me? And of course, I'm not justifying the abuse. But at the same time, uh, I feel that, well, late, later on in my own healing journey, uh, what helped me heal or to acknowledge that things happened was when I listened to other people who were brave enough to go on YouTube or to go on documentaries and to share their experiences because, you know, with their bravery to share, Hey, I've, I've gone through this. I've been in a cult and this and that happened. And that, that helped me to understand that, okay, I've been through something, but I can still get wisdom and I can help others. And, um, it, it's been a journey 
And I like how you're bringing that up about wisdom because, you know, so oftentimes people can, people can look at the negative things. And in my own experience, I always felt so guilty. I felt that everything was my fault, but sometimes it just takes one person to be courageous. And like you're saying, to seek power always, and it can really make a difference. So I wanted to ask, what were the differences the differences that you were able to see around you as you started this path uh, of being a consultant, an entrepreneur? Well, one of the things that I, I noticed was that we all have things in our life, and I think people don't realize it, whether you are you know on the street or you are a corporate leader, we all have aspects of our life where uh, we maybe feel that we're not good enough. We don't have all the, you know, information. I mean, I don't know about you, but, you know, with us both having a podcast, you know, there's definitely times where I've asked myself, like, well, who are you to have a podcast or to share this information or any of those things that happen? I think that those are some of the internal things that we have. But when we realize that, you know, we all have a, a path and an experience and that experience when any time that we utilize that to help other people that gives us the expertise that gives us the uh, nod if you will to say you know what we're here to help someone else because you could have seven people that all had a similar experience but they process it differently no one walks the same sh in the same shoes as anybody else and your own personal perspective may be the one voice that somebody needs to hear to heal something to see a different perspective to make a different choice in their life so by us stepping into doing our work in the world doing our part that even when we look at the uncomfortable aspects of our life the things that there was maybe shame or doubt or frustration frustration or things in that all of those things are actually part of our arsenal to help people to be able to have the insight that no one else has seen or experienced or gone through than yourself to be able to look at that from that different perspective so when we look at that in that times of of our journey and what that is when we look at it from the perspective of you know we are here from a for a bigger purpose then you know who are we to not step in that light, to not step forward, to do that? Like these things are happening to us so that we can actually build the wisdom and build the information that we can then do that kind of work. And so anytime you look at your life and you start looking at, okay, this, this was a dark aspect or that, if you just take a moment and look deeper into that and go in that pain and in that darkness, what is one thing out of that that has made me stronger that I can utilize to help somebody else, that I can see things from a different perspective. If you can just see one positive thing out of that. And again, like you said, it's not about, you know, uh, letting people who hurt other people, giving them a hall pass on that, right? It's how is it that you can take that experience and pull something good out of it so that you can then step in a positive light and then look at how you can grow from that. Because if we don't grow from that, we stay stuck in that pain. And then that person's won, right? They have kept you down in a way they have, they've chosen to take out your light, to not have you, to suppress you in some way. Anytime we take even the worst of circumstances and we can look at what's one thing, one skill, one thing that is different in my life with it, that is opening the door to the light, that is allowing you to step into that. And that is showing you not only as a survivor, but that you thrive it. Like you have gone to the other side of that. And now you have just like built so much strength around that, that you can now then be the example to help bring somebody else through that darkness and say, hey, this is what it looks like on the other side, that if I'm not quite there yet, maybe I'm on the journey of that, I'm getting there. It's one step closer to that. And you know, then people can see that what is possible. Wow, you are on fire at this moment. Um, I love it because uh, you are sharing about, you know, opening that door to the light and what tools can you suggest or recommend uh, for people who are having difficulty owning their life or allowing light to come in? Uh, what tools can they apply to allow that positivity and 
to enable them to start owning their life. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I believe that part of that healing journey is, is a choice. Like you, at some point, you just have to make a choice that I am going to live the best life that I can. I'm not going to let my past define me or hold me back. And it really is an internal journey to really have certain tools to be able to explore that allow you to better look at that. And so one of the tools that I really like, I've created an acronym, it's called PIES. I, I like to, it's P-I-E-S for the sweetness of life that we're creating. And it's to remind us the questions to be able to ask ourselves so that we can move through any confusion or clarity or anything that, that we need to do. So the, the first, the P in pies is for physical. So you want to ask yourself, you know, our body tells us so many different things and people a lot of times ignore what the body is telling us. And so in order for someone to have uh, a disease or have anything going on in their body or any complications, it, that's not something that happens overnight. In fact, most things take like 20 years to develop in your body. And these are things that people have ignored along the way. So when you ask your body, what do you need? And just be quiet and listen. It's amazing what your body will tell you internally. You know, it may need rest, right? It may need good nutrition. It may need fresh air. You know, there's all kinds of things that your body needs. You know, sometimes people forget just taking in deep breaths, like a deep inhale, just getting that oxygen into our brain. It calms us. It allows us to have more clarity. So, you know, there's so many things. Our body is such a gift to us, no matter if we feel like we're in the ideal version of our body or we're in the journey with our body. Our body is always there to protect us in a lot of different ways. So just asking those questions of the body really helps you get some clarity around what you need um, in your physical body. And then the I in pies is for your intellect. You know, our brain, our mind can just spin out in so many different directions. I always like to say that the mind is like a bad neighborhood. You don't want to go in there by yourself. Like you want to have some support of all the things that go on in your head. And so you want to look at, okay, what are the, you know, looping conversations that we have and start asking, you know, are they true, right? There, you know, a lot of times our mind is a device that just tells us things because it's trying to protect us. And if we just ask the mind, What's the message that you have for me? Like what, what's happening here? You know, then you can quiet the mind a bit, you know, and be able to say, okay, I get this. You know, maybe it's just telling me something to add to my to-do list, or it's telling me that, you know, uh, it wants me to look at something different in my life, but it's a way to give your mind uh, to kind of jump off that hamster wheel of having looping thoughts to be able to have some clarity around your thoughts by giving that time, that silence to listen to what your mind has to tell you. And then the E in pies is for your emotions. And a lot of times, you know, your, your emotions, you, know, you have to be, a lot of times we suppress emotions, you know, depression means that we are depressing emotions, right? And so if people are feeling depressed, you know, suicides at a high rate, there's a lot of things happening. If we give ourselves a moment and go, why am I depressed? What are the feelings that I'm feeling? And a lot of times there can be anger, there can be sadness, and there can be fear. And there's a lot of things happening in the world that are causing a lot of people that are getting triggered by fear. But when we sit with ourselves and we ask ourselves, what are the emotions? And we allow ourselves to feel them. One of the beautiful things that have been scientifically proven about emotions is that emotions run through you for about 90 seconds and then they change right? Emotions aren't static. They don't stay all the time. We let them roll through and we see what is our emotions trying to tell us. If we're fearful about something, if we're happy about something, no matter what those things are, we can actually learn from those and see what does our person need. So many times in the world, people say like, oh, I just want to be happy. Happy is an emotion. It's actually fleeting. Happy comes from happenstance. It kind of rolls in and rolls out. Joy is something that can be static within us. Even in the worst circumstances, we can choose joy. So we want to be able to look at what are the emotions we're choosing and what that looks like. And then the final in pies is the S, and that is for spiritual. And I believe when you ask your physical body what it needs, when we really talk to the intellect in our mind, when we go through the emotions, we then come to a very special place where we can be quiet within ourselves. And then we can ask, what is the spiritual message for myself? And then to just be quiet and listen for what it is. 
You may hear something immediately that will come to you. It may be something because you've asked the question, it'll come to you when you're driving your car or you're in the shower or you're on a walk. It'll come at a time because you've asked that it'll, it'll happen within you. And that is how we build our intuition of listening to those internal messages. When we actually, you know, move away all of the chaos and all the things that, you know, the media is trying to tell us that, you know, naysayers are trying to tell us when we get quiet with ourselves and we see what's true for us, we can then listen to those messages and then act and move forward from that sacred space. Wow. I really love that pies. Um, and when did you come up with this acronym? You know, it became, it, it evolved during my, the work that I was doing with people as consultants and really started looking at, uh, you know, what were the things that were taking people out of the game? And there were different things that were happening, uh, you know, physically within people's body, you know, and just emotional, like there, it, and I looked at it, it was all of it. It wasn't any one thing that, you know, we are actually a system and we work within all of those aspects of ourself. And so when we ask ourselves those different aspects, we really get to see what that actually looks like. And, you know, after that case that we talked about where my friend's daughter was kidnapped and killed and, you know, the, the stress and the anxiety that came from that year of trial and, and media and all the things that came out of, out of that case, we had a, somebody who donated for myself and the mother and someone else on, in the volunteer group to go to a place in Tucson called Canyon Ranch. And this is like a, a healing place. And I had never been to a place like this. And what was so beautiful about this was we really got to restore on, on many different levels being in this location uh, where we would go on hikes out in nature. There was waterfalls. You know, we ate really healthy food. We were finally getting some good sleep. And when we were taking care of all these different aspects of ourself, uh, in the evening, we would have these really powerful, clear conversations. Uh, and it was, it was through that timing that it really started coming to me that when we start addressing all these things that we tend to suppress in our day-to-day -day life, or we don't create time for it, that we, we don't give ourselves the space to have that focus or that clarity to listen to that internal knowing within ourselves. So it was part of that practicality of, of seeing what was happening for myself and seeing what was happening with my clients to be able to cultivate a tool where they could address all of those different aspects of themselves so that they can then come back to themselves and be able to come up with those answers. And I think that one of the misleading things that happens in the world is that somebody else knows better than us, that there is somebody else that can guide our path or our life. And, you know, when it comes down to it, we come into the world by ourselves, and we leave the world by ourselves. And we can have, you know, family and friends and people that support and we can have people that give us, uh, you know, guidance or consulting or all those things are great. But once we get all of that information, you know, th that's all knowledge, right? But when we really are on our path and we're really leading the life we want to have, that comes from knowing. And we only get to knowing is when we give ourselves that space to ask those kind of questions, to give ourselves that silence, to be able to listen to it, and then to be able to hear that divine knowledge that's meant just for us, just to know that next step. So, wow, thank you for sharing all of these positive things, empowering things, and to kind of start wrapping things up, where can people start listening to your podcast? Well, any platform that you listen to a podcast on, you can just go to Live Your Spa Life and it's available. It's on YouTube if you want to watch it or, you know, uh, Spotify, any any of the different platforms um, that you want to listen to. I'm also uh, on Instagram and Facebook and the social media is under my name, Diane Halfman. And uh, you can also go to my website, dianehalfman.com. You can also listen to the, to the uh, podcast there. And there's also some free resource tools that are there as well. So there's a lot of different information you can get from my website. So what, uh, what can the listeners expect when they start listening to your podcast? Because I know that you have several seasons. Yes, absolutely. 
So uh, we are just now uh, wrapping up the season um, about uh, about freedom, you know, and that's where I had you as a guest, where how people are creating freedom in their life. And that has just been really beautiful um, to have. Uh, past episodes have been around positive disruptors, like people who've had positive imprints uh, in the world. And we are just now starting to film for our new season that will be aired um, next year in, in 2023 uh, about, uh, you know, about how you're living like an impact in life. Like how are you making a positive impact and how you are, are making your, your influence in the world. And it's really about intentional living because when it comes down to it, we want to be intentional about the life we live. Life is very short. So we want to make sure that the intention we have for it is the one that we mean to live. Okay. Listeners or those who are watching on YouTube, uh, go check out Diane's work, her podcast, her YouTube, subscribe, like, uh, and go and support. And I look forward to, uh, to seeing more of your episodes and even listening to it. Um, because I listen usually when I go driving, uh, but there's just so many, uh, podcasts. It, it's so hard to listen to all these podcasters, but, um, I still believe that, uh, it's, it's always, it's always great when the podcasters can support each other. So thank you so much, Diane, for your support and for allowing me to be on your show and for coming on my show. It's been such an honor. And um, if you have any last words for the audience, uh, if you can share some wisdom. Oh, thank you so much. And Ryan, thank you for, for having me here. And, and I just want to thank you because, you know, a lot of times people will have challenging experiences in their life and they just keep them to themselves. And I believe that these circumstances that happen, that, you know, this is part of the platform for your podcast, right? To let people know that it's, you know, we can do hard things. And that really is my message is that we can do hard things and we can get to the other side, you know, utilize some of the tools that you need, ask for help. If you need help, trust yourself within that. It's so important to do that. And I just applaud you, Ryan, for, for taking your experiences and putting it out into the world, because even if one person hears it each day, that is a ripple effect that allows that person to get closer, to find the light of what they need in their life. And then they can then ripple that out to the next person. So anyone listening to this today, just know you can get through hard things, right? You can scale those mountains. You know, they were there so that you can find a way around it. So then you can turn around and teach others to do the same. Well, thank you so much, Diane. Um, again, this is the Truth That Heals podcast with your host, Ryan Anthony Hernandez, and with our special guest, Diane Halfman. Until next time, everyone, God bless.